Hey Weather Warriors, in this episode of Weather Dakota TV, I'm going to be giving you your snowfall forecast for the U.S. here this winter, and I'm also going to be talking about where the big storms could occur this winter as well. We're also going to go over a couple of cool snow statistics for each winter here, and I'm going to unveil what this map means here in a second. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns. And also comment below how much snow will Missoula, Montana see this winter. We'll get a little fun contest going in the comments. But for now, let's get right into it. We're going to first look at a couple of things I used to put this forecast together. This is the current Enzo status. It measures El Nino and La Nina. These are the models over here. There's several different models that were forecasting Enzo here. And this is the zero degree line. Anything above this line, above 0.5 degrees is indicating El Nino. And anything below about negative 0.5 is indicating La Nina. And you can see most of the models are centered here. This is December, January, February. That's all through March. Around negative 1.5. So that means we're in a moderate La Nina. And uh, the models are forecasting that to continue and then eventually lift as we head towards spring. This is the general pattern with a La Nina. Uh, you can see a very strong ridge out here in the Pacific Ocean. It digs into a trough into the East Coast. Areas where there's divergence along that jet stream is where you're going to get your storm systems, usually in the northwest U.S. and the Ohio Valley with drier and warmer conditions south of that. And you also have a Pacific jet stream. This usually uh, moves in quicker storm systems into the United States. Now, how much snow do we get during La Nina years? Well, this is a map of several different years combined together, averaged out of La Nina years. And you can see the blues here are above average. The browns are below average. Low average snows in the southern Rockies into the high plains and desert southwest, where you could see about two to four inches below average. And also in the mid Atlantic region, again, two to four inches below average out there. The areas of above average precipitation occur in the interior northeast, the far northeast United States, where as much as two to 12 inches above average. And then you can see Michigan into the upper Midwest, into the extreme northern plains here. We're, again, two to four inches above average. Uh, spotty, kind of uh, off and on in the Rockies, but if I were to lean one way, maybe slightly above average, that's what I have in my winter forecast. And then the northwestern United States, you can see much above average in this region. Some areas seeing feet above average, a couple feet, a few feet. Now, this is a smoothed out map. I would expect the areas in the upper elevations, the high res to maybe even have more than three feet above average in some areas. So another thing we're looking at is the warm waters out here in the Atlantic Ocean. Anytime we get storm systems to ride up the East Coast, they're going to be backed off a little bit. I think they're going to be farther northwest than usual because of these warm waters and a couple of other factors. But when we get, do get storms to ride up along the coast, this warm water is going to create a temperature gradient along the coast. And it's also going to really feed these things, you could get explosive cyclogenesis. They call it bombogenesis on the news. Anyway, you can get a lot of that to occur. But again, I think that's going to be a little bit farther northwest than usual. But we could have some very powerful systems in the Ohio Valley, in the interior northwestern United States this winter, particularly early and late in the winter. How about the ice, the snowpack right now? So how's the snowpack faring? Well, this is last year at around... This is November 11th, so it was a few weeks ago, but this is a good time to look at it. So this was a few weeks ago last year, and you can see that there's a lot of snow in Canada, except for the eastern part of Canada, and the or the western part of Canada, and the western part of the United States and the southern U.S., there was no snow. But as we go towards this year, again, this was a few weeks ago, but this is a good time to look at it uh, because you can kind of see uh, the trends here. You know, as we head towards uh, this year, you can see the snows really moved to the northwest. And even northwest Canada has a lot more snow. You know, that could actually build up cooler air and, and send a, a little bit of a cooler pattern into the western United States. We'll have to watch that. But you can see the eastern part, there is no snow sitting out there at the moment. So I'm really thinking that this pattern will set up like this this winter. You'll have a Pacific and polar jet and diving into much of the central and western U.S. into the eastern U.S., the interior northeast, with fast progressive storm systems in these areas. I think the pattern's going to be just a little bit farther west-northwest than a typical La Nina this winter. 
And again, our most powerful storms will occur in the Ohio Valley, extreme interior northeast into the southeast portions of Canada and also in the northwestern United States. The best snowfall occurring near and just to the northwest of these low pressure systems. So what's the actual snow look like? We'll look at that in a second. This was my temperature forecast, if you haven't seen that yet. I do go into this much more detail in my winter forecast up here. This is my full winter forecast. Up there, I'll link a little box or it's in the description. But this is a temperature forecast, and I'm forecasting above average for the southeastern parts of the U.S. and below average for the far northern parts of the United States. Now, the snowfall amounts, this is how this is going to work. Each of these uh, fills indicates 25%. So the brown here is going to be below average. So you take your average snowfall amounts, which I'll show you in a second, and subtract 25%. Now, I know a lot of these areas don't get snow, but we're just going to keep this simple. Anywhere in that area that does get snow, subtract 25% from your amounts. Now, another thing to keep in mind, some areas in here might see double their snow amounts. Some areas might see zero inches, but this is an average. So if you were to take an average location, it's going to average out at about 25% below average, okay? Some areas will get more than average, some will get less, but it'll average out around 25% below average. So keep that in mind. And then also this area, I'm forecasting below average. Most areas in here don't get snow anyway. Uh, so this shade's gonna be 50% below average. As we head towards the above average regions, this is going to be the Northern US, the interior Northeast, through the Ohio Valley, Northern Plains, into the Northwestern United States, this area could see 25% above average precipitation. So now you add 25% to your annual average snowfall. As we uh, head towards the Northwestern United States, I'm forecasting 50% above average. So this is kind of the jackpot where I think the most precip and cold air is going to lie, and that's 50% above average. Again, some could receive more, some could receive less, but this is going to be averaging this area out. Now, yes, I said there's going to be big storms out here. However, I think there's going to be more warm air out here in the east part, in the Midwestern region. So I'm not forecasting, you know, 50% or more out there at the moment, because I think there is going to be some rain issues at times, but overall above average. Here's your average map. So this is your average snowfall each winter. So you can take that previous map that I made, and uh, then overlay it for your region. You take this previous map and then overlay it for your region here. And you can see that the interior northeastern United States, they're checking in at 90, maybe even 100 plus inches near the lakes. Much of the northern United States, you're, you know, typically 30, 40, 50 inches. The Rockies, much more than that. And then south of the central U.S., it's only a few inches a year. So you can use that map for your, uh, your maps here. Now... Annual record total snowfall. Here's a cool map I put together. Or actually, I didn't put this one together. I found this one online. You can see that many areas here, record snowfall total, all the way down to the southern United States into Florida, seeing at least an inch. Central United States, two to four feet. Northern U.S., you can see many areas, 60 plus inches. Obviously more in the interior northeast. And the reason for that is because of that Atlantic Ocean sometimes really feeding those storms, blowing up those snowfall amounts, that temperature gradient that creates a stronger low pressure system. Then you also have the lakes that enhance snowfalls. And then you obviously the upper elevations get a lot more as well. Uh, let's look at the probability of measured snowfall each winter. And you can see that really anywhere above that line, north of that line is 100% below that line. It drops off dramatically as you head towards the Gulf Coast near zero. So that's a cool uh, little map there. You can see how fast that drops off. The probability of a white Christmas, much of the central United States, around a 30% or so. Northern U.S., it's 60 to 90%. Southern U.S., it's darn near zero. That's on average. Again, these are several winters combined together. The median date of the first snowfall, well, we've already seen that, but most areas, somewhere in November in the central U.S., the northern U.S., it's a little earlier, October, sometimes September, and then the southern U.S., it's usually after December. Uh, we'll do last day of snowfall. You can see most areas in the northern United States, it's March, April, or, uh, more like May or June especially in the Rockies, the central U.S. is more like March or April. And then the southern U.S., it's uh, rarely happens or 
you know, it's like February or so. Now, what I'm going to do is show you the snow depth. So how many, how many days do we have five inches on the ground? You can see that the central United States typically sees about a week or snow where there's at least five inches on the ground. The northern United States sees as much as one to three months. In the southern U.S., it's less than a day because you typically don't get enough cold air to get those big snows down there. Sometimes you do, but again, that's like every other winter. So this is getting averaged out. Uh, we'll look at the amount of days we're going to need at least an inch of snow to fall. So this is not depth, but this is actual snow to fall. This is the average amount over many years again. This is not the forecast for this winter, but you can use it as a guide. Another thing to keep in mind is because we have La Nina, remember warmer than average temperatures in the southeastern United States and colder than average in the northwestern United States. So that'll skew these results a little bit. If you're in the southeastern parts of the United States, it might be less than what these maps are showing and in the farther northern united states it's going to be more but you can see that generally speaking that most areas in the central u.s about a week or so seven days of one inch or more that falls and then the northern united states you can have as much as a month or so almost 30 days worth of one inch snowfalls or greater and then the annual mean maximum daily snowfall. So this, this measures the maximum daily that typically falls with these big winter storms. Most areas in the, even the southern, central, northern United States here, for most of the country, your biggest snowfalls will be typically 8 to 12 inches. Okay. The northeastern United States, because of that temperature gradient along that ocean and also the enhanced lake effect snow, you can get your nor'easters and they typically produce one to three feet. Same thing in the Rockies. But the southern U.S., it's rare that you're going to get those big snows because of the lack of cold air. So one more map we're going to look at is the mean number of days with freezing precipitation. Obviously, you're going to get more in the Rockies. This is a very smoothed out map. But most areas in the United States, two to six days, the northern U.S. and the interior northeast, maybe as much as 20 to 30 days of frozen precipitation. So we're freezing rain, sleet, and snow. So that's going to wrap up my snow forecast, guys. Uh, if you want to see my winter forecast, check that out up there. I linked it up there or in the description. I go over what this map means here in much more detail. And uh, so check that out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe, check out the winter forecast, comment below how much snow you think Missoula, Montana will see. Hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you soon.